Let's take a look at some of the metering options that are available in Cubase that can really help in setting up proper gain structure and delivering audio files that are the right levels. When we see our metering, we generally notice it directly to the right of the faders in the mix console and in a space between the track columns and a project window. If we want to customize the coloring of the different meters and set different metering points, we could go to Preferences, select Metering, and choose Appearance. I could set different metering points, let's say minus 6 dB. And if I wanted to have different colors for different points, I could have a dark red for plus 3 dB. If I wanted more orange for minus six, and we could add different metering points by holding down the alt or option key and clicking. So if I want to set it to minus 12 dB and have this be a little slightly more green, hit apply. And now we have new metering colors. We can see that the top of our fader scale and metering scale is currently set to plus 6 dB. If you want that to be extended to 12 dB, you can go to the project menu to project setup and set the volume max to 12 dB. So we currently see 6 dB as our top scale. Now I hit OK and our scale has been adjusted to plus 12 dB. Now when we look at the meter, sometimes people have a hard time understanding exactly what part of the signal flow the meter is representing. If you right click on the meter area, you can go down directly to your global meter settings. So here we can look at if you want the uh, hold options, if you wanted the peaks to hold or the peaks to hold or at what point in the signal chain that the meter is representing, whether it's input, post fader or post panner. So let's look at our full mix console view and take a look at some of the other metering options as well. So I'm gonna add my channel overview, which will give me some meterings at the top here. Let's add our meter bridge as well as our control room. So right now, I have my meter bridge set up and this can be scaled, so if you want it to be super tall or shorter, and now let's take a look at the different metering positions. So let's say I have it set for input currently. But if I set it for post fader, now when I move the fader down, I see that reflected in the meters. When it's set on input, we just see the input source and whatever adjusting that I do on the fader isn't reflected in the meter. If I pan it all the way to one direction and set the meter to post panner, I could see that this will be a combination of post fader and post panner. So as signal is going into the right speaker, I don't see the metering on the left channel. And if I switch to panning, we can see the metering immediately adjust directly to the panning and fader position. So it's very cognizant, be very cognizant of your metering position. So during tracking, you may want to see input meters, but during mixing, you may want to see post panner. There's another metering type that's very helpful, and metering is great at showing you exactly what just happened, but you may not have a sense of what is going to happen. And this is when we right click here, we could switch to wave meters. And this will show us and give us two seconds of information before and we see on the audio tracks, the audio waveform just appear. So you can see the piano keys here coming before. If you wanted to see longer information, you could actually go up to four seconds of information and you could change this by going to your device setup to the VST audio system and it's based on a disk preload. So you go between two and four seconds. So now as I adjust this, notice that 
we will just come here. I'll put it to four seconds, hit apply, that our metering scale will show four seconds of information before it hits the center point here, which is the play position. So again, we can see exactly when parts are going, going to be coming in and out. So again, just if I wanted to go back to the default setting, go to your device setup and adjust the disk preload time between two and four seconds and the metering scale for the wave meters will correlate just like that. The control room offers a tremendous amount of metering in a very critical area where it's going on in our entire mix process. And there's a number of different metering standards that are available for different markets, uh, especially for broadcast. So if we click here, we could actually choose whether we want to see digital scale, DIN, EBU, British, Nordic, K System 20, 14, 12, these are the Bobcats. So the CAT system 20, 14, and 12. And some of these meters, you could actually have different calibrations as well, depending on how your converter or your monitoring system is set up. So, but if I wanted to look at this at full digital scale, now when we would play back, I could do that. Or if I want to see it at DIN or CAT system 20, CAT system 12, so we could have these different metering options. And one of them that's the most important currently and, and a very relevant metering is called the loudness units. And sometimes people will call this the EBU R128 scale, LUFs people will call it, or loudness units. So if you click on this, you wanna activate the loudness units. And at this point, you could see your loudness unit metering. And this is going to be really was initially set up for broadcast purposes so that there was a unified loudness standard. Um, and it's basically more aligned to instead of peak metering, RMS metering, but it's not exactly the same, but conceptually very similar. And for broadcast, a lot of people want minus 23. Uh, LUs or loudness units for the optimum level. If you deliver louder than that, they're going to decrease the dynamic range through dynamics, you know, compression, or increase it if it's too low. And different delivery systems will actually, like Spotify recently announced that they're kind of optimizing everything for minus 14 LUFs or loudness units. So you could actually click on the setup window here and you could have different presets. So if you're delivering for Spotify or if you're delivering for broadcast so that when you know that you're delivering the actual project, you can have the appropriate metering with that. Sometimes when you're actually looking at an audio file, you may want to look at the file and to determine what the overall loudness was by peak or loudness units of a particular track or a mix down file. And this could be accomplished by selecting the event, going to the audio menu to statistics. And at this point we could determine all these different statistics for different meterings resolution as well as the peak the loudness units if we need to do dc offset so all these different things can be determined statistically so you can see that cubase has tremendous amount of flexibility in customizing your meters being able to see different types of meters different metering sources different metering scales so that you can deliver your project with confidence if you found this video helpful please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel